So when it comes down to printing, there are two methods we can use. We can either use the printer manager's color, or we can use a custom profile and let Photoshop manage color. So let's go through the process of first letting the printer manage color. So we go to File, Print, and this opens up the Photoshop or your image editing applications dialog panel. At the top here, we can see that the printer has been selected. This will be your default printer. In my case, it's the Epson Stylus Photo R3000 printer. And I'm going to go straight over to this next section, the color management section. Now the color handling, we're going to let the printer manage colors. This means that the printer is going to actually choose one of the CAN profiles to apply to your particular image. So the printer profile is grayed out at the moment. The rendering intent, I'll come back to that when we talk about custom profiles. So the next stage is to actually go to the print settings and this launches the printer's properties panel. So let's go through the various stages. The media settings, at the moment the inks are set to photo black ink and this is for glossy media. The other option is for matte black ink. Your printer may not have this option on there, but this particular printer, you can either use photo black for glossy or matte black for matte printing. The media type, select the media type and we go down to the drop down list. We've got photo papers. So we've got the premium glossy, glossy, premium semi-gloss, premium luster. On the matte paper front, these are all grayed out because we have selected the photo black ink. If we'd selected the matte black ink, then these would be activated and the photo paper glossy media will be grayed out. When you select the ink on this particular printer, the printer will automatically swap the ink cartridges over for either photo black or matte black. Um, there will be a slight amount of ink wastage whilst the print heads are being cleaned to purge out the either photo black or matte black ink. So we'll stay with the photo paper, Epson Premium Glossy. And it's going to be a color print. The other option is advanced black and white photo. I will deal with black and white printing in a future episode. The print quality, we've got three settings. We've got speed, quality, and maximum quality. And um, speed's gonna give you slightly lower resolution, but a faster print. The quality is going to give you a very good quality print at the resolution if we look on the left hand side there 1440 by 1440 this means it's going to be high quality the next setting maximum quality will produce an even higher resolution of 5760 times 1440 this will use up a little bit more ink give you that extra bit of quality but the difference between maximum quality and quality is very negligible so my recommendation is to stay with quality the mode we've got Epson standard sRGB um, most cameras will be shooting in sRGB and if your work if your workflow is in Adobe RGB select this option the photo enhance one this gives you the option to make all sorts of adjustments from within the printer dialog panel um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one you can do most of the image editing and color correction in your image editing application. So leave that one alone. ITM, if we want to apply a custom profile via the printer dialog panel, we'll use this setting. But again, I'll come back to this one in custom profiles and off no color adjustment. And um, this will let your image editing application manage the colors for you. Um, so for the time being, I'm gonna stay with Epson standard sRGB. In the paper settings, I've set the source to sheet, and this will use the rear drop-down gravity feed on the printer. The other options are roll paper, or front for fine art media, that's mainly matte media, or front for poster board, and that's for thicker media, or CD, DVD printing, and this is for printing on printable DVD discs. But we'll stay with the sheet one for the time being. And our size is A4, so we click OK. And now we can just press the print button. For the vast majority of prints, a CAN profile will do an excellent job. But if you want that extra quality, then you may want to consider creating your own custom profiles. 
For creating our custom profile, we're going to be using the i1 spectrophotometer from XRite, and this together with the iProfiler software. I've launched the i1 Profiler software. I've got two options here. I can go from basic or advanced. In the basic mode, I can either display profiling, projector profiling, printer profiling, or scanner profiling. I'm actually going to go into the advanced mode. So click on there. And from here now, I can select the printer I want to create my profile for. And this is the Epson Stylus Photo R3000. And I'm going to click on the profiling tab. I can select how many of patches I want to generate. And I actually only want to generate 1,054 patches. So we type in 1,054 patches. I can either scan them in consecutively like this, or we can scramble the patches. But I'm actually going to select this to do by the default way. And so now we click on the next button here. And we can select our page setup. And I'm going to print these on A4 size paper. And it's telling me it's going to print one of two pages. So it's going to generate two pages. If you're going to use if you use more patches, then obviously you're going to be using more paper up for that. So I'm quite happy with that. And this is just using the default settings. So now once you've got all the settings set up, you press on the print button. And this brings up your printer's properties dialog panel. And we're going to preferences, make sure everything's set correctly. We've got photo black ink. And we're also using premium glossy paper. Um, the only thing I need to change at this stage now is the mode. At the moment, it's going to apply an Epson standard sRGB profile. We want to turn this off altogether, so off, no color adjustment. And this prevents the printer from actually applying the CAN profile to your test chart, which is going to totally mess up any profile you're creating. So ensure that this is off, no color adjustment. And we'll click OK. And now we'll just print out our test charts. Now you should let the test charts dry out for at least one hour or longer just to stabilize the colors. Once you've done that, we can start taking our readings. Now place the test chart in a special holder together with the guide. We introduce our spectrum photometer on this and this guide will help you to scan each line at a time. Press the start button and slowly swipe the spectral photometer across each line and then we move the whole unit down one line and start again and we go from left to right and this is just a single pass scan. Each of these colors will be measured and compared to the reference file. Any difference will be noted and your profile will allow for any differences on there. If you look at the chart here, you see that each color has got divided into two. The top quarter or the top half is actually the the file reference color. And the bottom corner is what's been measured by the spectrophotometer. So now the profile is going to work out the difference between these two colors and create a profile for you. So we click on the next. And now our profile is going to be created for us. So we'll give this a a name so this is glossy media profile um, obviously if you're using third-party media you'd possibly sort of enter the third party's name and also the type of media you've profiled and create and save our profile the next printing option is to actually use a custom profile so we go to file print and again this brings up the Photoshop print panel. So now we keep our settings exactly the same, but in the color handling, instead of printer manager's colors, we're going to select Photoshop manager's colors. Under printer profiles, um, your CAN profiles will be available on the top here, but I'm going to use the custom profile I created earlier, and this is a glossy media profile. So now we're going to be applying this profile to our printer. And the rendering intent, this can be confusing. In short, it defines how color management converts colors from one color space to another. And the main problem is usually with out of gamut colors. These are the on-screen colors that can't be printed due to the limitation of the inks. And there are four rendering intents to choose from. And the first one is perpetual. 
and this aims to preserve the visual relationships between colours so it appears natural to the human eye, although some colours may have shifted slightly. And this is a good setting to use for photographs with lots of out of gamut colours. The next option is saturation, and this reproduces colours vividly but at the expense of accuracy. It's ideal for printing out PowerPoint presentations, Excel charts and other bold graphics, but not much use for photographs. The next option is relative colorimetric, and this compares the colors from the source color space to those of the destination space and shifts them accordingly. Out of gamut colors are moved to their nearest reproducible color. Relative colorimetric preserves more of the original colors than perceptual which makes this an ideal setting to use for photographs, so my recommendation is to keep it set to relative colorimetric. And the next option is absolute colorimetric. And this leaves colors that fall within the destination space unchanged. Out of gamut colors are clipped. Although this is an accurate option, it may not produce the most pleasing results. So let's put it back to the relative colorimetric. And directly below is an item called black point compensation. This is used in the conversion of files using ICC profiles when converting from RGB to CMYK. For most RGB printing, you can leave this box checked. However, you might encounter some poor blacks when used with older profiles. Experiment with the setting on and off and see which works best for you. But as a rule, you should leave this on. And the next and most important part is to go to the print settings. And this should reflect the settings you used when you created your custom profile, so be sure to make a note of what settings you've used. Again, we've used the photo black ink and the media type. Now, if you're using third party media glossy, then you could safely just use one of the glossy settings there, but make sure you use that same glossy setting when you're actually printing using your profile. As I said before, the media type will determine how much ink is actually laid on the paper. So we'll stay with the premium glossy color. The print quality will leave set at quality. Now this is the mode and it's automatically changed this to off, no color adjustment. This means the printer driver is not going to apply a profile. The profile is being applied through Photoshop or your image editing application. If you had this one selected now to Epson standard RGB, then you would be double profiling and the print would look pretty awful. So make sure that this is off, no color adjustment. This is the vital piece on here. And this is where a lot of people come unstuck because they will stay with the Adobe 1998 or the sRGB setting. It must be in the off position when you're using a custom profile. And again, the paper settings, whatever media you're printing on, then you select the correct settings for there. And we'll click OK. And now we're ready to print again. This print was created on an Epson R3000 printer with Epson Premium Glossy Paper using the Printer Manager's Colors setting, which employs a CAN profile. The print has vibrant colors throughout with good detail in the black cotton reel. The black and white image has a neutral tone. This CAN profile is more or less spot on. The next print is using the same printer and media combination, but this time we've created a custom profile with the X-Rite Spectrophotometer. The colors have slightly more saturation. The blue swatch and skies are more vibrant. On our test print, there isn't a great deal of difference between the canned and custom profile. And this reassures me that Epsom have supplied good canned profiles. A custom profile would be more useful for third-party media. In this example, I've created a print using a custom profile and also kept the printer can profile turned on. And this has produced an unacceptable print, which has been double profiled. In the last frame, we can compare the can profile with a custom profile. Bear in mind that the profile samples are scans of prints and so we may have lost some of the color vibrancy in the scanning process. On the right hand side is the original digital file. Look at the color patches and see the shift in vibrancy and saturation. The green swatch seems to be the weak color on both profiles, although this could be improved by sampling more color patches with the spectrophotometer.